working with Spark and working on technologies that help the data at scale. Um, so, so that's the main thing, that's mainly what's covered over the, the 13 week period. We also have a number of case studies where they practice and, and do practical, um, they, they take their ideas and apply them in a practical sense. So <clears throat> without further ado, I think we'll get into the talks. Um, but before, before we get going, I uh, just want to talk about the format. It's four minutes and then we, I will walk around between each one and ask a question from the audience. So we'll, we're just to be respectful of everyone's time, we'll do just one single question. Um, and we'll kick it off with Chris. Thank you, Adam. Uh, my name is Chris Feller, and having worked as a statistical analyst in the NBA for the last few years, I've come to the conclusion that for most teams, success is heavily reliant on the, their ability to select the right players in the NBA draft. And to illustrate this, I'll contrast the Orlando Magic and the Philadelphia 76ers, each of whom has had a top 10 draft pick in four of the last five years. Yet Orlando currently sits in last place in the entire NBA, while Philadelphia is conveniently in the Eastern Conference playoffs with a newly named NBA All-Star and potential Rookie of the Year candidate. How can two teams five years ago at the same place end up on such different ends of the success spectrum? Comes down simply to were they able to draft the right players or not. I wanted to bring a machine learning approach to this to make predictions of which, NBA, of which college players would be most successful at the NBA level, while at the same time uncovering which player characteristics and on-court metrics were most predictive for NBA success. To do so, I needed a target variable that encompassed the player's production, efficiency, and contribution to team success. I ended up choosing value over replacement player, a metric developed in the baseball world centered around the idea that each player has some sort of marginal utility past a replacement player, a player that comes from the developmental league or playing over in Europe that could come in as a replacement tomorrow. You can see that the league average is right below zero and a perennial all-star, somebody who brings much more utility to their team is around five or six. When we break this down between the four draft classes in my training data, you can see from these violin plots, the white dot is the median value, and then the width of each band is how many players have that value of VORP. What we're looking at here is the draft classes in 2011-12 and 2014-15 really had that top tier talent, those all-star of Anthony Davis and Carl Anthony Towns. Whereas the 2012-2013 draft class, which is commonly known as the worst class in the last 10 years, did not, and in fact, had more busts players that were selected to the NBA but never actually played. When we look at this analysis across the age at which a player was drafted, you can see a general decline in the expected value of players the older they are when they're drafted. There's certainly more high potential in young players and certainly more probability of a bust for the older players. As far as my methodology goes, I aggregated data from four sources. My feature matrix was composed of 89 features. One problem I ran into was I didn't have a lot of observations in my training data. There's only so few players that are drafted into the NBA. And so to account for this, I utilized a bootstrapping technique where I sampled, I randomly sampled with a replacement to increase the size of my training data and make my model more generalizable. And that's really when I started to see success in my model and making predictions. As far as the model itself, I cross-validated and grid searched on eight potential regression models with gradient boosting performing the best. That ended up being my final model. In production, uh, I had some winners in my validation data set. Jordan Bell, who was seen as the steal of last year's draft, he was selected 38. My model had him as 13. Donovan Mitchell, similarly, a potential rookie of the year candidate, was selected 13th overall. I had him at 18th. Really happy about that. Unfortunately, also some losers. Bryce Johnson, who my model um, predicted to be the number one overall draft pick in 2015-16, has already has just had his third year rookie option decline, and much like us, will be looking for a job in the near future. <laughs> Diamond Stone, who I predicted in the top 15, has already been cut by two teams, so certainly some, some work to do. Looking forward, predictions for the upcoming draft. Feel pretty good about it. This is my top 10. Missing two, uh, two big names, but for the most part, seven of the 10 have a legitimate shot of being drafted in the top 10 picks of the NBA draft. And with that, I will point you to my personal website, which has my contact information, as well as my, a link to my repo. Are there any questions for Chris? Right. So I noticed on the uh, numbers you had, you had a predicted form. Is that different than, like, is, is there a little leakage there? Do you know the form only after the people have played, or is this something you know before they've gone in? 
Yep, only after. So I was using um, their second year statistics, um, second year of work value in the NEA.